Hey animators, I've been kind of off the scene, I guess, a little bit recently with work, quite busy for the last year or so. Um, so I'm just, just doing a quick video that's going to be a little bit loose, a little bit more improvised, I guess, than my usual ones. It's just going to show some general approaches, principles, tools I've been using recently, particularly for dealing with dense motion capture data. But I'm finding now that I'm actually using the same workflows, going back to other styles of animation. Some of these tools are, are things I've teased before. Some of them are... are come further along since people have, would have seen them last time anyway without too much preamble let's just jump into it so i'm just blocking out this um kind of idle cycle here and it's, you know it's okay there's a there's a lot of issues with it right now um so i want to just start finessing it a little bit one thing i really like to do a lot recently is grab say the the ik spine controls and you know rather than relying on this too much you know the up and down with that or sorry, with the main control. I like to keep that controller very simple. I look in the graph editor, you know, it's it's pretty clean and simple there. What I like to do is grab these guys, and I'll just open a tool here that creates baked world space locators, or controls in this case. Those three loads of people have tools like this. Um, Morgan Loomis, I think, was the first person I was aware of, locators, and um, there's quite a few other ones. This is my own particular one. But the whole, whole idea with this is though that now I have stuff that makes a bit more sense in the graph editor. If I open the graph editor now and look at translate Y, that is Y relative to the world. So I can see, you know, if that's smooth or not. So I'm gonna look at that. And I feel like that's not too bad. It's maybe coming to a, like a light tight ease there at the top, but maybe it's a little bit freezing a little bit too much and there's light switch on the wireframe. So I can kind of see that. And maybe even turn on the field chart as well. It can be handy sometimes. So it's, you know, it's not locking, but it's kind of a little bit there, a little bit maybe too held. So see, actually there, for there's a few frames there where it is kind of a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just hit grab this sex and just average it just a little bit. That's a bit better. So now it's not quite as locked. And that might be enough for that. You know, the other one though, the chest, I'm definitely not liking too much. I can actually see it in the curve here. One thing I know is I have everything baked on ones here. And again, this is just a thing I'm experimenting with. But I find that um, I've, I've, I developed these tools. This is based on Gravities, um, which is a tool I released commercially, um, which I've kind of kept working on in my own time. And it's now got three sliders instead of the one it originally had. And uh, I find this has been really, really useful when working in mocap. Um, I've used it all the time. And I'll show you what I like to do with it, actually. I'm, I'm experimenting with, rather than looping my curves, you know, using the view infinity thing, I'm actually copying them. I'm actually doing a, I have this little tool here called Top and Tails, which literally copies all of the keys in the timeline further down and, and f further forward. So now I've got a clean loop. I can actually see that now. So rather than um, doing too much, this, I'm going to just grab these two keys. I'm just going to hit smooth a few times. That's going to smooth out. So this is going to get me closer to kind of default. I'm going to pause these as well, just so I get the same values coming in. That's going to give me pretty much close to standard spline interpolation. And that's already feeling a little bit better. Um, let's look at that. There's a rotate Y there that looks a bit stiff as well. Yeah, I can actually see it. So that's, it's kind of coming... Maybe I might just soften that all together. Maybe just do this again, do the same kind of thing here. Yeah, I don't mind that too much. Let's look at the rotate X. Yeah, I can see there it's a little bit, because I'm looking at all this in world space now. It's not relative to his hips or his body control or anything. So these curves are really readable, uh, which is my whole thing doing this. So I'm gonna maybe grab these and just hit average a few times just to kind of soften that. Um, I'll delete. Sometimes I delete these and recreate them again so I can kind of get a sense of how that curve looks. And maybe grab these ones, just average them, just soften them a little bit. Yeah, I like it a bit better. And I feel like the rotate Z, I can actually push a little bit. So I'm gonna start from maybe just a smooth, like that. I'll do the same over here so I get the same kind of result. Um, I'm going to start from just that, but I'd like to maybe favor them a little bit more. So I'm going to select these ones, and I'm going to drag a little bit more. So I'm going to ease this back, select this range here, and ease this back, tighten that ease a little bit. 
to the way. So just kind of dragging that back. The sliders now, this one that kind of controls the start of these, and this one then controls the blend out of it. So you can actually get almost like an e you know, a spline ease with both of them up. And then this one pushes it, kind of clamps it down a little bit like one in a popular tool that's out there. But this, I, I don't find I use this an awful lot I, sometimes, but this, these are the ones I kind of use all the time. This and this just for softening. Basically, I want it to really be slow here and then accelerate a little bit more. I find this gives me a lot of control over what shape of these is. Yeah, that's a bit more of a nice. I'm just trying to get something a bit more interesting than just basic splines. I'm going to delete the outside stuff again and help me to let me just uh, average those a tiny bit. Yeah, I'm preferring that. Um, so I'm going to grab, uh, actually I'm just going to open up my world tool. I'm just going to bake down. It'll just bake all those back to the rig. So it's an easy those extra controls. That's a bit better. The other thing I've been working on quite a bit and using quite a bit is um, some animation layer tools. Uh, I've got them all on the marking menus here. So if I want to say create a layer, say I want to have his head motion a bit bigger, and maybe I don't want to deal with it in the graph editor too much. So I'm just going to create a new layer, and it's going to name it, and it's going to give it the name of his control, which is nice. So I'm going to hit a key there, and a hit key there, just to knock it in. And then I'm going to maybe drag it just a little bit more. And then here, maybe I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit Z, which is a hotkey I have for a zero. It's just going to zero out that layer. And maybe even drag it down a little bit. I get a bit more personality there. I might actually hit that. I might find it a little bit too hard, so I might get rid of that one. Yeah, I like that. And now I'm just gonna use my smarter bake tool, which is just gonna bake that back to there. So I'm not weak. I'm keeping an eye over here what's going on, but I'm not really using a lot of stuff, as in I'm not using these buttons and stuff. I find the layer interface myself is a bit a bit clunky sort of thing. The other thing I might like to do is I notice for me the shoulders are kind of okay, but they're a little bit maybe too much. I feel like I'm particularly the the right one here. I'm feeling this as a bit too separated from what's happening with the body. It feels like he's kind of shrugging on each one rather than being just driven by the by the weight of the rig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an override layer this time. I'm just going to hit a, set a key on it. I might even just zero it out on that layer. I'm just using a cycle tool here just to kind of, but it has no effect because it's an override layer until I blend it in. So I can actually remove the animation on that altogether by doing that, or I can blend it off. So I'm getting kind of more of a, you know, there it is full, a bit too much. And there I'm kind of blending it out. So I'm liking it there. It kind of feels like it's now it's a little bit less than the, le than the left shoulder, which I didn't mind too much. And I like that. It's a bit of a symmetry in what's going on. Um, so now I'm just going to select that, and again, I'm just going to Smarter Bake it. Um, Smarter Bake is kind of an intelligent baking tool in that it, it doesn't add any keys. It only changes keys that exist. In this case, it, it's baking everything anyway because it's just keys on every frame anyway. But in a simpler scenario, like when you've got less keys, it can be pretty nice. Um, so yeah, now that I'm looking at this now, I feel like I want to, I want to do the same thing with that. Maybe not as much. So again, I'm just going to hit set a key and just put it down to just a four pose basically, and then I'm just going to blend that in a little bit, just maybe like twenty percent or something. Maybe a bit more. That's what none. That's not enough. What I like about this is it's really interactive. I can just play with this value. I'm not going into the graph editor and kind of scaling curves. You know, I'm just kind of playing with stuff. It's like, I, I almost feel like this is like audio mixing. I'm just like turning up the level of something or turning it down. You know, more bass, less drums, whatever you want. You know, you just, just dial it in. And it's very, very interactive. You could even like, if you had a supervisor or somebody looking over your shoulder, you could, you could do this while they're watching you, which is really cool. And a lot of people use 
animation layers in this sort of way. The first person that showed to me, me was Marco Folia at Animate, actually. He was a ninja with animation layers, and I hadn't used them up that much up to that point, but when I took a course with him and I watched him use them, I was like, oh, okay. These are super powerful for making kind of broad changes, but with really, really good control. So yeah, I'm liking that. Now I'm just going to bake it. Do you notice I constantly bake them? I don't keep layers in the scene. I just I just think it's it's just junk here that adds up and it ends up getting confusing in the timeline and the graph editor. Um, and especially if you're working on a pipeline with other animators. You know, you, if you if you hand off a shot to somebody and it's got like a bunch of layers with no names on them and stuff, that's no fun for, some, for the next person to come along and try and figure out. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. That's just a quick look at some of my current... Uh, workflows. One thing I would say is that they're always evolving. The tools and the uh, approaches and the the mindset is something I'm always adjusting depending on what I'm working on. But I find it's kind of fun at the moment. I'm coming from working on cinematics for ten months, and now I'm coming back into doing more cartoony, more game based, you know, gameplay based stuff. It's kind of fun to try and apply that that workflow and that mindset to a different style and see, you know, does it work? Because pose to pose and all that kind of stuff is great but i don't know if it, I'm, i've always been more of a layered guy myself i don't know if the c the, the 2d approach has ever really worked for me and obviously depending on the style you're working on if you're working on something really cartoony then yeah of course it makes sense but i've always been more of a layered animator and i just find the, the tools i've developed recently uh literally let me work that way like working with animation layers so i hope you'll find that interesting uh interested to hear what you think cheers